Financial management. An overview for business study students studying this area for the first time. There are three main questions that business owners ask when starting or operating their business. Where do I get the money from to expand the business? Will that make a profit? And will I get a return on my investment? Three important questions and that's really why we're here. We must remember that we must relate um, everything that to the goals that we set in the first place. Maximise profits, increase market share, maximise our growth, improve a share price. There's a nice little graph of share price, that's the way we'd like it to go. And importantly if we talk about profit maximisation, it's the, it's the gap between the total revenue that we have for getting the, uh, for selling a product or service and trying to minimise the total cost as much as possible. So the total revenue at maximum difference from total uh, cost is what we're trying to achieve. So revenue maximisation and cost minimisation. A graphic example relating to market share and improving a share price is the big battle that goes on between our two big retailers. Please have a look at the YouTube clip and during the lesson time I'll ask you to complete the snapshot questions on the case study on page 149. This is Woolworths Limited and this is West Farmers. You know them as Woolies and Coles, the big friendly giants, the number one and two retailers in Australia. 23 cents of every dollar we spend ends up in their pockets. More than just Woolies and Coles, they own a range of supermarkets. They also own variety stores, electronics outlets and hardware chains, as well as many of the places you buy alcohol. And not just bottle-o's, Woolies has a 75% stake in 270 pubs and clubs, and Coles is catching up with 91. That's a lot of poker machines. Woolies alone operate 12,000 of them. The Giants also sell fuel through deals with Caltex and Shell, and West Farmers owns coal mines in three states. But their core business is still groceries. Together, they share more than 70% of the Australian market. The UK's two biggest chains share 48%. The US equivalents are mere 20. The Giants flex their competitive muscles in a number of ways. They gradually buy out smaller rivals in a process called creeping acquisitions. They also buy land their competitors might be interested in and leave it vacant, a tactic known as greenfield acquisitions. In 2008, an ACCC inquiry found evidence of more than 700 restrictive covenants. Deals made by Woolies and Coles with shopping malls to keep out rivals such as Aldi and IGA. The Giants agreed to phase out this anti-competitive practice, but hundreds of the contracts remain. The Giants have also been accused of predatory pricing, using their huge buying power to push prices down, driving smaller competitors out of business, at which point they're free to raise prices again. And they don't just squeeze their rivals, they squeeze their suppliers too. The National Farmers Federation claims farmers are getting as little as 5% of what you pay at the checkout. Finance commentator Robert Gottliebson describes this as one of the greatest scandals ever seen in this country. Despite a recent ACCC inquiry into pricing competition backing the giants, farmers groups are now calling for a royal commission. Last year, Woolies and West Farmers made over $100 billion in revenue. They spend millions of that marketing themselves as caring Australians. Yet our grocery prices are up 41% since 2000. That's 8% higher than the OECD average. But if you want to protest by shopping elsewhere, good luck. Woolies and Coles have 6,500 stores. Despite protests from some communities, that number keeps growing. Woolies and Coles, our big friendly giants. As the Coles ads tell us, every dollar counts. Now that we've uh, seen what the Coles and Woolies situation is all about, <clears throat> let me just relate further objectives of financial management to you. Profitability, increasing profit as much as we can. The growth in our business, so we have an increase in sales, we're obviously going to make hopefully more money. Efficiency relates uh, mainly to how we control our costs, so remember 
that if we decrease our costs as, as large as we, as we can, we increase our level of pro probability. <coughs> and these last two are interrelated. Liquidity talks about the amount of cash flowing for a business. So a business is said to be solvent if it's got enough liquidity, um, i.e. enough cash flowing through the business. More, more on that later. Before we dive into the accounting and finance sections, let me remind you that there's four business functions and they're all interrelated. Finance is the core component, but they are also dependent on how well the operations go, how well we market our product or service, and what people we have employed. So there's this interdependence with other business functions which we need not to forget. Okay. Financial management is to, has two main arms, finance and accounting. Let's start with finance. That was related to one of the first questions we asked, where are we going to get the money from to source um, its funding? So managers need to ensure that the business has a good credit rating so the banks will end, lend the business money. A credit rating is developed over a period of time by paying back loans quickly and efficiently. The business may want to expand, update technology or open overseas. All that takes extra money. Where to get that money from is a big question. Usually the banks is that source. Uh, the other source can be um, the shareholders or other uh, owners that come in, in, into partnership into our business. But if we don't have that much money, it's the banks we go to and they want to assess the ability for the business to repay the loan. Um, so if, if, if their business goes bankrupt, uh, they want to know if they can recoup that money through um, various other assets they can sell. Um, and also, can they manage their finances so they can make repayments on a, a weekly or monthly basis? So they're the two main things the banks looks at in relation to finance. So in relation to finance, it's to do with how uh, how the business funds its activities to expand or whatever, uh, how they manage their borrowings over the period of time once they've made the expansion, um, and also they plan for future expansion. So they they need to have a, a three to five year strategic to strategic plan, um, <clears throat> and for that to occur, they must plan over that period of time to um, make these things come possible. Now the other side of financial management is accounting. Essentially is, is to provide financial information about the business. What sort of things do we need to know about? Well, they need to know about cash flow. We've mentioned that already. They need to anticipate when cash expenditures are due and ensure that enough money or income has been generated in the meantime in order to make a profit. And there's always something unforeseen that comes up and we need to have enough cash uh, there for uns unforeseen expenses. The study of accounting is to do with the recording of financial transactions. And examples are check payments that we pay for our wages, we receive uh, money from our customers, we issue um, invoices to our customers, we receive dockets, delivery dockets from our suppliers and as, as uh, the world goes on these days more and more transactions are made electronically. Now all these transactions are summarised and posted into accounts onto, onto a computer. So we will know how many sales we've made and what our cash bank balance is, um, how much our suppliers are owed and so forth. So all that needs to be put in account. Now we're not concerned with that, we're more concerned about the financial reports. So once they're summarised, um, the, uh, the, the, the final account balances are posted to financial reports for us to use. We're the managers, remember? And once we've got those um, reports, we interpret those to run the business and manage it. Um, and to try and keep the business on uh, achieving its goals and maintaining its viability to remain solvent and so on. <clears throat> There's three types of reports that accountants look at or generate. We only have to use them and interpret them. 
All right. So the cash flow statement looks at the liquidity, i.e. the amount of cash going through a business. Income statements is, incur is involved with uh, looking at the income and its expenses um, to try and generate as much profit as possible. And the balance sheet, um, it's to do with the financial stability of the business in terms of what it owes, their, their liabilities, in terms of what it owns, its assets. More on that later. A range of stakeholders are interested into what happens within the firm. First of all, the competitors, they are hungry after its customers and so forth and will do anything to try and gain sales from us, the business. The government, well, they're interested in us paying taxes and so forth. The customers, they want good value and good products and services. The lenders, providing the finance, they want to ensure that they get the money back and make regular, uh, that we make regular payments to them in terms of interest and paying back the capital. Suppliers, well they rely on us very heavily to supply us with the goods um, that we need in order to satisfy our customers um, and our shareholders. And lastly the general public, we can put the shareholders in, in that lot. So there's a number of people or stakeholders that rely on us. Accounting is, a useful, is useful to provide information for to state what our financial position is, what our cash flow position is, um, what our financing position is and our capability to uh, keep paying our debts or to indeed in expand our debts, what our profitability is and what our return on investment is. And you notice that these all relate to the initial um, aims and objectives of financial management in the first place. We also want to analyse trends um, in terms of all these things here so we, we, we can manage our business the best way possible. Now I want you to stop here for a second, um, go to your books on page 235 and these questions I want you to do before you go on to the next section please. Now let's have a look at the cash flow statement, but before we do that, I need to talk to you about what goes in and what comes out. So cash inflows can be large, well, will largely come from our cash sales, money in that from selling our good or service. Um, quite often we allow our customers to, to put um, uh, sales on account um, and they will pay us at the end of the month. So when the credit sales, that's what we mean by credit sales, and when they pay us for um, work done or goods received, usually about um, 30 days later. And we also have other investments and, and um, maybe we have a rental property and that income also comes into this swimming pool, if you like, of water. So the more that comes in, um, <clears throat> the more profit we make in, in essentially. But this diagram is more to do with ensuring there's enough money in the pool to pay for payments of stock. Now this only applies to a trading business and not a service industry. Okay, We all want to pay for all our costs and expenses. Wages tends to be the biggest part for most Australian businesses. And we've got non-operating expenses and payments as well. For example, we, we may uh, um, pay for an expansion, we may buy a new car, things like that. So essentially the thing that to remember here is that this pool of cash must be full in order to pay for these things here. Let's look at a cash flow statement in more detail. Essentially the question we've got to ask ourselves is there enough income to pay for expenses, wages and loans? Liquidity, and that's why we looked at a uh, cash pool, right? Uh, liquidity is the amount of cash. Um, that measures the amount of cash flow that flows through the business. So we've got enough money in the pool, that means we've got enough liquidity. And if the business has enough liquidity, it's said to be solvent. Solvent means that it can continue to trade as it's currently doing. Now cash budgets are very closely related to cash flow statements. There's one essential difference. They look at the future and they're an important tool of any business. The cash flow statement looks at what has happened to the cash, but quite often we need to anticipate um, what happens or what, what could happen in the future. 
We do that to identify, identify cash surpluses. So if we've got a lot of cash in our check account and earning hardly an interest, we must put that somewhere to earn a more interest or to put it to better use, maybe buy an asset or to expand or buy a new car or whatever. Quite often we need to uh, try and uh, manage our shortfalls and sometimes there is a shortfall in the future if we've got lots of things due at the same time or if we've made a commitment to pay a big loan or if we've in indeed in expanded. Um, we need to plan for that and a cash budget is good for doing that. And as part of our planning we may be um, wanting to expand um, or to buy something new so can we afford that? Do we need to wait a bit longer? Do we need to get a bigger bank loan? These sorts of things that um, cash budgets will tell us by trying to work it out what happens in the future. Here's an example of a cash flow statement. That's the historic one. So this the cash inflows is money coming in. You can see here we've had some sales uh, and a very big um, income here from our two, uh, three big manufacturers, but A and C are the bigger ones. Total inflows there, and from that we take away the total outflows. We can see that we've had a small um, cash surplus here. Right? So that has been derived by taking uh, that figure away from that. In February we had a much better month. The inflows were six million. Take away close to five uh, million, and we left with about one. So that was a good month and you can analyse why and it's essentially we got lots more money from manufacturer A. Going on to March we had a similar amount of inflows but we had a big increase in outflows and that was due to a lots of raw materials that we purchased. You can see how that went up from 3 million by 1 million to about 4 million, 4.7 million which in this month has meant that we've had a deficit. Now minus figures in accounting are uh, represented by these brackets as you can see. Okay, We don't put a minus in front of it but we have brackets so that's accounting speak for brackets. Now again I'd like you to stop, go to page 30, 239 and these questions here. Extension 1 is a very relevant one. Um, I'll, be going, I'll be asking you to do that in class when you get back. Now let's look at an income statement. Here's a very simple one but which um, relates to us the broad concepts of how an income statement works. While we don't have to um, actually produce one, uh, we have to know the relationship to, um, so we can then manage um, our profitability from this standpoint. Okay, So simply put, we had $2 million worth of sales, money coming in. We Those sales that we sold, for example, we're talking about a clothing store, we bought them in at a million, that's our cost of goods that we sold, and we got two million for them, okay, which left us with a gross profit. And that is the profit before all other expenses are taken away. In this instance, it was 500000 which includes things like wages, rent, insurance rates, and that sort of stuff, um, which left us with a net profit of 500000 And that's what we call the bottom line in accounting. The income statement is also called the Statement of Financial Performance or Profit and Loss Statement. So don't get confused between any of those three. Um, and here I've summarised the relationships, so the sales, we take away the cost of goods sold, which gives us a gross profit. From that, from the gross profit, we take away selling admin and financial expenses to derive at our net profit. And obviously you want to try and keep these as least as possible and keep that as high as possible so that means our net profit can be as big as possible. Here's a more complicated version of an income statement. Sales, less cost of goods giving us gross profit of 1.8 million. We had selling expenses totaling that, off administration expenses totaling that, financial expenses totaling that. Now all those were added up. Our total expenses were 1.144 million take away from that figure and we've got a bottom line figure, a net profit of $656,000. And they're, they're the sorts of things we need to look at and understand. We don't need to know how these things were derived or set out even. Again I'd like you to stop. Uh, this stuff on uh, income statements, three questions there. Please do those before moving on to the balance sheet also known as the Statement of Financial Position. 
what does it show well it shows us a list of assets of what the owners own it keeps it keeps an eye on the debts the liabilities that the um, the company or the business has and importantly it keeps an eye on equity the owner's equity because that's how much the business own in that business this shows the net worth and the net worth is simply by saying okay this is the amount of assets we got we take away the liabilities okay another way of looking at it um, is if I bought a car for ten thousand dollars that's my asset right and if I had to borrow six thousand dollars I have got to put in four thousand dollars so the owner's equity in relation to my car is four thousand dollars I take my car ten grand my loan um, of six grand leaving me with owner's equity of um, four and that's what we call net worth the balance sheet shows the financial stability of a business which I'll talk a little bit more about later right? and assets can be classified as current and non-current same as liabilities and current and non-current and what that means is that any asset that will be turned into cash is called current and any liability that has to be paid in the next um, year is called current so for example in, in relation to non-current liability things that don't have to be paid a loan that doesn't have to be paid within a year is called a non-current liability like a, a mortgage for example and a non-current asset is, is, is a thing that we have for the long term for example a building uh, cars equipment and that sort of stuff and another way of looking at all this is assets now those assets were purchased right and how were they funded well they're funded by us and by external parties and they're the liabilities that we own coming back to my initial um, example I bought a car for 10 grand I borrowed six and I put in four right that's a simplistic way but the principles all the same here we have a example of a balance sheet you don't have to know how it's derived but I want you to know what the certain sections are and what they mean assets are represented by cash by current assets cash and so forth they're the things that get turned into cash in the next accounting period which is a year and non-current assets are things that we have for the long term you can see here that we've got a total assets that plus that giving us a total assets of 131 over here we have the liabilities the things that we owe to the outside parties we've got current liabilities these are the liabilities that we have to pay within the year and then the, the stuff that we don't pay we don't have to pay straight away a mortgage that's paid usually over a 20 year period that's that's situated there it's classified there you can see our total liabilities made up of those two items 73,000 right which leaves us if we take away that from the total assets we get total owners equity of fifty six and a half thousand dollars right so assets equals liabilities plus owners equity and you can see here that owners equity is hopefully rising every year and if we if we make more and more profits the higher the level of profits the more the owners, total owners equity rises and that increases our wealth and that's really why we're in business in the first place right and by looking at this we can see how stable a company my business actually is here's some more uh, questions for you to do on page 247 and wait there's more these two exercises combine what you've um, been um, learning about the income statement and the balance sheet together okay so I want you to do all those things please hopefully that's been helpful to you and that this will provide a springboard into um, looking at these accounts and making some judgments making some interpretations analyzing um, to manage our financial affairs the best way we can hopefully that's been useful and thank you for listening